it is said faith leads to victory and Baba has told us about four kinds of faith but today the faith that is being underlined is the faith in the self. Now you see that if you look around there is lack of faith in the self and everybody is going through you know this uh, experience which is called self-doubt and uh, Every soul is experiencing lack of faith in the self. And uh, lack of faith in the self is usually, you know, um, the thoughts that arise in that situation is like, I'm not good enough or I'm not enough or I'm not, you know, I'm, I don't have enough or I don't have uh, enough in the sense, not material things, but I don't have enough specialities, enough qualities, or I don't have a good fortune. These are the things that people are thinking all the time. And um, Baba says it's very important to have faith in the self. And for faith in the self, Baba says that you have to start looking at your specialities and not your weaknesses. Now at this time, every soul has specialities and weaknesses. But what do we pay attention to? And now that we are powerful souls, we can choose what to pay attention to. Yes, earlier we thought that, you know, paying attention happens naturally and there's not much choice. But now we know that paying attention can be chosen. So Baba says, choose to pay attention to your specialities and not to your weaknesses. Now, when you sit and think about it, you know, there are these specialities in the world where you know, um, somebody can sing or dance or, you know, do stuff, uh, maybe speak, maybe paint, or maybe, you know, they are good at calculation with numbers or they are good at analytical thinking. So everybody has some speciality or the other. But mostly when you think about these specialities, then more often than not you think that you know yes i have this speciality but then i'm not good enough or you know i'm not in the race i'm not number one or you know my singing is not the best or my painting is not the best so then you need you know validation from the external world so to to validate that you know you have this speciality and I remember there was this Mata, she told me something very nice uh, that Mata was into depression and uh, I asked her, so she said that I have been in depression for the last two years and she was 67 years of age. So I said, up to 65, what were you like? So she said, I was the happiest and the most motivated and enthusiastic person you could ever see. So I said, then how did you uh, change into this person? So she said that, you know, I, I like, I have this acumen for uh, gardening and uh, I have this acumen for keeping everything organized and I have aesthetic sense and I can really decorate a place, a house, and I can maintain the garden and grow beautiful flowers. And um, this speciality is something that I hold very dear to my heart. And then um, when I got married, my husband and my in-laws did not have any 
uh, any eye for beauty and they never appreciated uh, my speciality. They did not, in fact, I wouldn't say they did not appreciate. They did not have the capacity to appreciate my speciality. So they did not find a difference between a well-decorated house and a house that's just, you know, scattered and everything is lying, down, lying around. Or they could not distinguish one plant from the other. So uh, in the beginning, I was very, um, you know, it was a setback and I felt that my speciality is not recognized here. But then slowly what happened is my, I was very close to my brother and my brother got posted very near to my uh, in-laws place. And when he got posted, he would pay regular visits to my place. Uh, so every once a month at least he would come. And uh, because he had a very good eye about these things, so he would appreciate me like anything. And he was really my biggest fan. And he would tell me, Didi, the work you do, nobody can do. And uh, I still held on to that speciality because every month my brother would visit and he would appreciate and I loved that and I would look forward to his visits and I would keep maintaining the garden and the house and wait that he would come and appreciate. And this kept me going for 65 years. And then, you know, my, uh, my brother died. And uh, when he died, so he died two years back. And ever since then, I don't feel like getting up and doing anything whatsoever because I don't feel that anybody understands the work I do or the speciality that I have and because I have stopped doing all of that so I'm slipping into depression but I don't know how to come out of this. So why I'm sharing this with you is because sometimes you know when you have a speciality you want it to be appreciated and an external speciality when you have uh, something that you think is contributing to the world you want it to be appreciated and when somebody doesn't have let's say you put in hours of effort in cooking and you feel that cooking is your speciality but then somebody just eats it gobbles it up and then <laughs> They, they don't even, you know, recognize that so much effort went into it. Then sometimes, you know, uh, people are discouraged. So uh, what I have understood from my experiences, <coughs> when Baba says that always keep your specialities in your awareness, it is not about the specialities that I have in the world. Because you see that those specialities will need recognition from the world. But the specialities that Baba talks about is Sangam Yugi speciality. So you know and um, Baba appreciates us for our Sangam Yugi specialities. And what is the speciality that I have as a Sangam Yugi Brahman? So you see that now that we are sitting before Baba, Baba says you are the most special children, you see. Baba says that you are the, you're the best of the best. And why Baba says that is, Baba says even if it's my last child, that child is also very, very, you know, unique and close to my heart because that child also recognizes me. So always remember that I am the child who recognizes Baba and I am the child who has love for Baba and I am the child who Baba loves back and I am the child who has Baba as the father, teacher, Satguru and I am the one who is being sustained by the Almighty Supreme Himself. So when you keep these Sangam Yugi specialities in your awareness and then 
uh, the speciality is that you are the you are the right hand of baba you are the one who gives support to the one who everybody is seeking support from so baba says you are my helpers so the world says you see that the world says god is the helper and god says i am the helper so it's such a big speciality to have and then you know whatever speciality that you have in a worldly way also maybe painting cooking drawing um singing dancing talking whatever speciality you have analysis if you offer that speciality to baba to baba seva then you see that you receive a lot of appreciation and recognition for that speciality because baba always uh, you know you we feel whenever you use your speciality for seva you feel definitely that you know you're getting the blessings of that seva and that that speciality is growing so even so somebody has health somebody has wealth somebody has uh you know uh, concentration somebody has any speciality maybe honesty maybe uh, even if the speciality is in the form of a virtue maybe somebody is honest somebody is uh, consistent somebody is disciplined when when you offer that to baba baba appreciates you too much for that speciality and every child feels that whatever speciality we have offered to baba that speciality grows and we also feel that we are being blessed and appreciated for that speciality by god himself and you feel that happiness from within that happiness of having offered your speciality to baba now what do you mean by uh, offer your speciality to baba so let's say you know there was this one um i think that girl was 24 25 years of age and she came to the center and she was telling me that i have this quality that i am a very surrendered person so when i belong to someone i belong to them totally and then i don't think twice and because of this quality i have had my trust broken many times and whenever i enter into a friendship or a relationship or even with the lokic family with some relative with some cousin if i have that love that surrender for that person then i am wholeheartedly surrendered i cannot um i cannot do anything behind their back so she said that i am a very loyal very dedicated person and because of that my heart has been broken too many times and my trust has been broken too many times and i feel like i am sinking into this feeling where i have started doubting whether it's a good quality or not and anyways because of the trauma now i am not able to surrender that much so i told her would you like to surrender that quality to baba <laughs> now you see that when i say offer your qualities and your specialities to baba it means that you know when you surrender in the world then people will ask you maybe people will take you for granted and think that you have nothing better to do so you have come and surrendered to them or you are are just wholeheartedly available for them because there's nothing else to do but when you do that same thing for baba baba recognizes that every second and you can feel it in your heart that you know when i am surrendered in this relationship with baba and i'm committed to baba with my whole heart my body mind and wealth then baba appreciates that surrender and uh, baba says that anything that you use for me will be you know will make you feel special so maybe you have uh, discipline and maybe you know 
when you are very disciplined, very punctual and uh, you reach every place on time, then these days instead of being appreciated, what will happen is everybody will just, you know, beat their head that this person will come at the right time and nothing will be arranged and it will be a problem. But uh, if you do that to Baba, if you every day uh, sit before Baba at Amrit Vela at, the, at a regular time or you are present in the Murli for the exact right time or you are present for the class for the exact right time, then Baba will appreciate it very much. So Baba says that, you know, there are two kinds of specialities in us Brahmins. One is the, one is the speciality that makes me a Brahmin. And another is the speciality that I offer to Bra Baba and that speciality becomes special. So even if that speciality was not recognized, so you see that there was this one Mata and uh, she was, she's a very good Mata in Dharana and she follows all the disciplines of uh, the Brahmin life and once she came to the center and I asked her to cook something for Baba and uh, she, cooked, uh, she cooked a meal and then she offered bhog to Baba and uh, then we all, you know, we all uh, accepted that bhog. And uh, when, we, when we accepted the bhog, so it was very nice and cooked with love for Baba and everybody who accepted the bhog, appreciated the mata and, the, and then you know she said that I have been cooking for the last 35 years but never I have been appreciated like this. <laughs> so you see that and she said that when I took bhog to Baba and I offered it to Baba, Baba also you know was, I could feel the Baba giving me that love and that appreciation for the bhog. So you see that whenever you offer any speciality to Baba, you sing Baba's song, it will, you know, it will earn you so many blessings that your heart will be full if you can sing. And if you can talk, you know, you talk, Bab, you share Baba's gyan and it will earn you blessings. So Baba says, uh, A, every Brahmin has the speciality that makes you a Brahmin. So you have the buddhi, you have the, uh, you know, you have the, you have the capacity to recognize Baba, love Baba, you have the capacity to understand Baba's words and teachings. That is something is your speciality. And then second thing is the speciality that you surrender to Baba in Seva. And Baba says, when you keep these specialities in front of you and not the weaknesses, so everybody has many weaknesses, many shortcomings, but if you just keep these specialities in your awareness, then Baba says that then you will move forward and have victory. So this is the first thing that we need to do for ourselves to develop faith in the self. And then second thing, second aspect of faith that Baba talks about is faith in Baba. Now faith in Baba means that, um, so you see that people say that God is with me, but then we are sure that God is with me. Yes, and why? Because I'm holding Baba's hand and what is Baba's hand? Does Baba have a hand? So Baba's hand is Srimat. So when I'm following Srimat, so I'm holding Baba's hand. Baba tells us that I'm Nirakar. I don't have a physical hand, but when you follow Srimat, that means you're holding my hand. And when I'm holding Baba's hand and Baba's hand is in my hand, then I have faith that I will only move forward. 
and this is faith in Baba. So Baba says that don't think, don't ever have this doubt that you know there is nobody to help me, nobody with me. So Baba says those children who follow Srimat, they must be sure at all times that Baba's hand is in my hand and Baba will pull me across whenever there is anywhere you know I can't do it on my own because when you see when you are uh, when somebody is pulling your vehicle then you know that even if the vehicle is stuck they will just pull it out of that obstacle so Baba says that I am the one whose hand is in your hand and I, you must have faith that Baba will take me across and Baba will take me further. So do you have that faith and how will you have that faith when you follow Srimat? And you see that um, there are times when you know everything looks very uncertain and it's very dark and bleak and at that time uh, you cannot think on your own, you cannot even rely on your own specialities. There are times when you feel that, you know, even your buddhi is not able to figure out what to do, what not to do. But in those times, um, if you can refrain from creating a, a weak thought and if you could refrain from giving up, it is only because you have faith that Baba is with me. And how do you have that faith? When you have always followed Srimat, then even in that bleak dark hour, you will not have a single thought that maybe I am alone in this situation. You will always have this deep faith that Baba is still with me and something will happen and I will go across. I will receive some guidance, some help, something, some stroke of luck, something will happen and I will go across this situation. And Baba says that this is faith in Baba, but faith in Baba will only be there if you have held Baba's hand. And third is, you are an observer in every scene of the drama, but you have faith that every scene of the drama is beneficial. And Baba says that I have cre I am known as the creator of the drama and you are my child. So can a child, can a father write a script where the child is not the hero actor? No, the ch father will always write a script which is good for the child, you know, which is beneficial for the child. So when you have faith that, you know, this drama is created by my Baba and this drama is definitely rigged in my favor, then you watch every scene but you have faith that every scene is for my benefit. And these are the three kinds of faith that Baba is talking about. And this faith leads to victory because you see that victory and defeat in Sangam Yuga, what is victory and defeat? When you have weak thoughts, then it is defeat. When you are strong in your mind, that's victory. Because whatever can't affect your mind can't affect you. The law is whatever can't break your spirit can't break you. Whatever can't affect your mind can't affect you. So the simple thing is that when I have these three kinds of faith, then I never create a weak thought in every situation. I never create a thought of giving up in any situation. And when I don't do that, then what can't affect my mind can't affect my life and I can definitely overcome it. So Baba says, have faith in the self, 
have faith in baba have faith in drama and i think you know having faith in the self is very very primary because if you don't have faith in the self you cannot have faith that baba loves you because you see everything is projection you look at so i look at baba i look at drama but i will only look at baba and drama as i am so if i have self doubt i will also have the doubt that baba loves me and i will also have doubt that the drama is beneficial for me do you agree with this because basically we project every scene onto the inner self based on the quality of the self so have you seen those people who so you know um, i remember there was this mata who used to come to the center and whenever you know we would be discussing some you know some something that is to be done then she would keep explaining why she is not able to do it and why you know her circumstances are not okay and in the beginning i used to wonder why does she always start about herself when it's not about her you see it's if we are discussing a general situation and we are just discussing what needs to be done in this situation but she would start saying you know how how she is in a bad position and she can't help the situation and she can't contribute to the situation so slowly gradually as i started understanding gyan i understood that whenever somebody is talking about somebody else she starts thinking about her own self because that's her quality she is always in self doubt so she feels that everybody is pointing fingers at her whereas it's not about her nobody is talking about her or nobody is blaming her but she starts point she feels that everybody is pointing fingers at her or there's something wrong with her because that's a, there's a lot of self doubt in her and then slowly uh, she came into gyan and she started getting healed so baba says that you know you look at every situation you perceive everything in your mind you are a soul and you perceive everything in your mind space yes whatever is happening outside even baba who perceives baba i the soul perceive baba in my mind space i the soul perceive every scene of the drama in my mind space and i perceive as i am so if i am in self doubt i will doubt baba's help i will doubt every scene of the drama and if i am sure of myself it becomes easier to have faith in baba and faith in drama so faith in the self is the first and foremost and and baba has given us a magical vidhi that you know just keep your specialities in your awareness and you will start building faith in yourself and then today baba talks about you know uh the the royalty of purity and baba says that when you maintain your royalty of purity you will become detached from limited attractions now baba says that um in the world you see impurity is the norm and people think that you know impurity is the way to be and nobody thinks that impurity is you know impurity is something that shouldn't be there but baba says that you you are taught about purity purity of thought word act purity of body mind wealth and we are the only children who understand purity and who embrace purity and baba says this purity is like royalty so you know just like 
the royal family is very different from all the other people around other people in the kingdom similarly in this whole world purity will set you apart because there are only baba's children that to number wise who understand and practice purity and you see i have seen that um people in the world are uh, have a great interest in finding out why bk's uh, you know the face of bk's and uh, the happiness of bk's cannot be copied <laughs> so you see that people are even you know the way we talk or the joy within or the peace within or uh, the the smile the happiness that reflects on our face and the purity that reflects in our personality uh, people are trying to figure out where that comes from and that is a very rare thing and uh, you we are set apart from the whole world even if you don't tell anybody you are a bk if you are really practicing what baba is saying if you are paying attention to the purity of body mind and wealth then you are like this royalty who can be distinguished in any any environment any situation and i remember there was this one sister she was sharing her experience she said that you know uh, when i was going to the uh, when i was traveling from somewhere to somewhere then uh, they on the airport there was this sister who was frisking her checking her and then uh, she uh, she just saw me and she kept looking at me and she said that um you are very and she was looking for the right word and she said you are very i don't know what very but maybe you are very beautiful so she said but no not beautiful i mean something else but i don't know how to say it so she said do you mean pure so she said yes yes that's the word so you have this uh, i can feel that purity from you and baba says this purity is your royalty and um, when you are full of this purity then you know that fullness makes you stop craving for what all what the world is craving for and you know this purity the more and more we imbibe this purity because all the directions that baba gives us the shrimat that baba gives us for body mind and wealth is just to make us pure and the more pure we become then you know uh, we stop being attracted to anything in the world and the world starts getting attracted to us so this is the royalty and this brings the shift that you stop being attracted by anything in the world so the food in the world the clothes in the world uh, you know everything that you earlier liked you know the travel the holidaying the things you don't want them anymore because you just feel like they they are not you know they are not that valuable but on the contrary the whole world starts looking up to you and they find you very attractive so this is the royalty of purity okay om shanti